Worcester, a city under siege from the Severn once more. The main bridge has been closed, splitting the area in two and causing chaos. You can't even get through and I'm out now looking, trying to find a route to get into work tomorrow. Tomorrow will be terrible. They'll be jam-packed. You will know, you know, be all going over the other bridge. Well, it's coming like, shockingly quick, but there's nothing that we can do about it, really. The waters are due to peak overnight here. The authorities are bracing themselves for a difficult week. Due to the volume of water going under the bridge, the decision has been taken to close it as a precaution. And until engineers are satisfied it is safe, this busy route in and out of the city centre will stay shut. We're seeing some, some really high levels now. Um, Worcester and South, the levels that we're seeing, certainly the highest since 2007. Um, and they're still rising, you know, and unfortunately the, the impacts are really starting to have, happen now. Yesterday, this historic pub in the nearby village of Seven Stoke had put up makeshift barriers which seemed to be holding up. But in the early hours, the landlord and his family were forced to flee as the water seeped in. It'll be closed for several weeks. It was the speed it came at, so in the end, we just grabbed a pair of trousers each and uh, my son and his lady and um, my wife and I came across then and it was above the height of our waders then, so we just, um, we just managed to get out. The state of the surrounding fields has left the pub's neighbours fearing the worst. We are the second house from the church down here and at the moment um, it, it's probably about a, a foot from actually coming into the house. Back in Worcester, contingency plans are being drawn up as the bridge is not likely to open until Tuesday at the earliest. All our emergency staff are working at this moment in time and we should be putting on bus services to get people to and fro work, from work tomorrow during the rush hour in particular. Getting back to work is a distant prospect for some, though, who are left wondering how they'll be able to recover from the devastation that's already been caused. Bob Hockenall, BBC Midlands Today, Worcestershire.